spring. When the world begins to thaw, the animals begin to stir, and young folks' minds turn to thoughts of love. It's also the time of Valentine's Day, our celebration of relationships and romance, and also for venerating a Catholic bishop who was martyred for defying the church's mandate against marrying clergy. The festival has been commercialized to the point of near meaninglessness, but this year we're getting into the spirit. You see, we live in Indiana, so a Christian politician fighting to allow people to get married is worth celebrating. As such, we felt it was appropriate to put down our swords, set aside our magic missiles, and indulge in some good old heartwarming Ghibli-esque storytelling. This is Golden Sky Stories. Yuyake Koyake, localized as Golden Sky Stories by Starline Publishing, is a Japanese game by designer Kamiya Ryo. All of his work is extremely stylized and attempts to recreate the feeling of a certain storytelling with excruciating loyalty. In the case of Golden Sky Stories, that style is Honobono. This can be best described as heartwarming stories. The genre focuses on slice-of-life tales, often as uplifting tales of growth. Think Choose New Home, 5 centimeters per second, or even Spirited Away. Players take on the role of Henge, shape-shifting animals with magical abilities. The game focuses on the people who live in the town, local gods who live outside, the Henge themselves, and the relationships they forge within the whole of the community. The Henge grow, learn, and the story builds from that experience. This game runs on a diceless engine, and it is barely there at all. It is as stripped down and non-present as can be accomplished. This is a blessing, because it allows you to pretend that you're not playing a Devil Diceless game like a chump. <sighs> if you like or even prefer Diceless games, you, you'll have to forgive Fox some of his hate. He means well, but he's a little bit slow of mind. There are four attributes. Animal, your physical abilities and senses. Child, expression and manipulation. Adult, willpower, self-control and skill. And Henge, the strength of a character's magic. It's a general target number system where you need an attribute to meet or exceed a difficulty to succeed. As such, characters have three resources, feelings, wonder, and dreams. Feelings are spent to increase attributes if a higher number is needed to succeed on an action. Wonder is spent to activate the Henge's magical powers. And finally there are dreams, which are used to increase the connections that the Henge has to other individuals or to the town itself. Connections are measurements of the characters' relationships, and are the source of their feelings and wonder. It's a nice big circle of resource generation. One of the more interesting aspects of the game's engine is the way it handles combat. Specifically, it does not. Players may take actions that are combat-oriented, but fighting is always penalized. The game discourages violence entirely. That's not the kind of story it intends to tell. Even in the case of self-defense, a character's connections will suffer for fighting. However, one can assume that this penalty can be waived if the game master forces someone into a fight. If this seems unfair, then you're right. It is. The GM should not put a player in that position. All in all, it's very stylized, different, and interesting. It might seem like this game would be hard to sustain, and maybe it is, but that really doesn't matter. It's intended for small stories, after all. It's great for introducing your kids to the hobby, or for just relaxing when things are getting rough. Golden Sky Stories does its job well in that regard. Thanks a lot for agreeing to this, guys. I know this isn't the kind of game that we're used to playing, so it means a lot to me that you're giving this a chance. I'm really excited to run Golden Sky Stories. I made a dog. Her master's pretty poor, but he keeps her anyways. She can help out in an emergency if he gets too hungry. She's called Ininabe. Nice! I'm a pet rabbit. My owners feed me a lot so I can help them in the garden. They call me Kaso. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You know, that's pretty good, but I think I'm gonna win. I'm a venerable kitsune, but I don't go into town much because everybody wants to make me their fox wife. I'm called Ma. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with how stressful these last few months have been, I just thought we'd hang out, have some fun, try something new. I guess give me a call if you guys want to play riffs or something. Well, sh. That wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. We'd better apologize. Hey, what's up? Not a whole lot. I'm just gonna watch five centimeters per second. Okay, so sorry for being a chuckle. We actually want to play. I changed my name to Coconut. I live at a roadside shrine. They're Hogo and Kogo, and they're gonna be pets of a local guy. All right, cool. Let's see what the town has to offer you. All right, Kogo and Hogo, your master Ozuru is having a really bad day. You see, he was trying to work up enough courage to ask his girlfriend Jiyu to marry him, but his little brother Kozuru dropped the engagement ring into a lake. 
He's thinking of taking it as a sign that he should give up on the proposal. Ozuru sounds like a job for me. I'm a dog. I could cheer anyone up. Wait, did he drop the ring in Fukai? I know that lake's local god. He could probably help get the ring back. I'll go see what he wants. I'm sorry, despite all of your wheedling and promises, Mizumi no Zasokami won't help you. Anything dropped into the lake, Kitsune-chan, is an offering. I got this. He wants a rare treat, right? No problem. Like the raven of the moon, I can pound mochi. I'll make him a mochi flavored with worms and millet. It's perfect for a fish god. Mizumi no Zasokami definitely enjoys the treat. I don't know where you got this, Kitsune-chan, but I can't get enough. He disappears into the lake and returns a moment later with the ring. I don't know why this is so important to you, but I'll give this to you and owe you a favor besides. I will take this ring and I will tie a long, thin red line to it, run over to Jiyu's house, wrap around one of her legs, tie kind of rubber in that, and I'll go to Ozuru's house and gently place the ring in his hand after I tug him to wake him up. Ozuru looks at the ring in amazement. You can read his face as he begins to form connections in his mind. His eyes follow the red string from his hand to Jiyu's. His face contorts into an expression of resolve as he grips the ring in determination. What is that? asks Jiyu curiously. All right, well, I'm gonna stop there for the night. You can't stop there, we're right at the resolution. Yeah, this is what we've been working toward the whole night. Oh, come on, I got really invested Okay, here. okay. I... Ozuru steps forward, the ring in his hand trembling. As he lowers himself to one knee, he looks at Jiu and says, Next time, make your characters right the first f***ing time! Wait, is he a dick or did we deserve that? I'm confused now. The only thing I'm sure of right now is that the Inquisition just made a connection to his Jedi in my Star Wars game. So, Golden Sky Stories, what do we think? I totally love this game. It's so much fun. I feel like the system, what there is of it, is actually very elegantly designed to almost be invisible. Yeah. And I that's really a really solid choice for a game like this. I feel like you don't want crunch. Oh, no, 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 no. Like this. I like and that yeah. I can be a tanuki. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. that's my favorite part. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I think it's really lame that you can be a fox spirit who would want to ever do that. Of it's course. Really I can't imagine. It's very out there, though, as far as just, like, we're going to have a game where there's just no combat whatsoever. I, I honestly really like that. I like story games. I think they're really fun. Uh, I think combat has a time and a place, and sometimes I just want to play in a story. And, I don't know, I like that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Japanese folklore, and I I'm a really big fan of movies like A Letter to Momo. The engine is interesting. Uh, it's like, it's weird how they did the whole point by thing, and I am gonna admit to be a little put off by the idea of I win because my attribute's higher. That always rubs me the wrong way. I can see that. But the point system really mitigates that heavily, and actually kind of removes the deal breaker for me in that regard. Almost every diceless system I've ever seen works on my number is bigger than yours. Is. Right. Yeah. Dreams, wonder, Dreams of wonder and, and something else. Uh, I'm just gonna call it whimsy now. Whimsy. <laughs> whimsy. I'm gonna admit though, this is another of those games, like it's just like Micton. This is another of those games that you brought to the table and I, I looked at you like, really? And you still do that. And I still do. I think, and it's not what it is, is I can appreciate that this game is well designed and does what it sets out to do. But it's not for you. But it, it tells stories in a genre that I just don't click with, I think is what uh, it is. It didn't win you over the way Mixon did? Not as much, and I think partially that might be because Victim far more of an adventure game. Far again, far more yes, far more of an adventure game. It's less of a radical departure to the the RPGs that my black and cynical soul has been <laughs> has been immersed in for you know twenty years, mm -hmm. because I feel like it's kind of this this pastoral role playing game thing. I've seen a couple that I've that I've thought were really cool. Like Ryu this Tama. Is, Ryutama, yeah, Ryutama is, is one of the one that I I think that if someone pulled it out, I'd be like, yeah, we'll give that a shot. That, Why not? I, I, I want, now I want to talk about that. We can't. It's Golden Sky Stories. Can't do that. <laughs> um, but it's this is I think the most extreme example 
of a pastoral role-playing game I've seen. Designed to play out one of those slice-of-life anime series that I don't watch. Like Cheese New Home, or to a lesser extent, Mushishi. I can appreciate the <laughs> elegance of it. It needs more card games. Needs more card games. Needs more, card games. <laughs> needs more children's card games. Needs more Egyptian laser beams. Yes. Yeah. Needs more Sly for the executive producer. Indeed. I don't know. It, I think this is this is one of those games that you really need to have people on board. Oh, absolutely. Like um, this, this game is destroyed by anybody who's not really into doing what it's meant to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, like if you every, get a, a cynical old curmudgeon like me comes in and is just not having it, like is just not in the mood, not doing that to, that day. Why is everyone happy? Why are we talking to this fish? Exactly. <laughs> I don't like don't, it. Why don't I? Look, I have teeth in my mouth. Why don't I just bite this little bat? <laughs> 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 the author of this game mm -hmm. uh, is best known in the States for his game Made, the role-playing game. I love that game. Hmm. I thought and I it's... was going to hate it, and then I played it, and it was a fucking blast. <laughs> but I personally feel like this is a neat little bit of esoterica that is right at home in anybody's collection. Pers uh... Yeah, I recommend picking up a copy, at least in PDF, to read as an exercise for seeing a game that is more angle for just pure social action. You try. might get have one. You might end up with one of those, and his heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> kind of moment. Sometimes maybe it just hasn't hit me yet. Yeah, this game really like so. reaches to me. Cause it's cute. But I can see why. I can see where people just wouldn't be interested. All right. So if you got a little local god in your heart, ask them what you should do, and they will tell you your most auspicious course of action is to hit like and subscribe for more videos from Roleplay Roulette. We've got another one coming out later this month. I think we're doing Broken Rooms. Yeah. So if you want to see us kick a hard left from happy go lucky esoterica to just pure depressive end of the world end of the world we're going to end 13 end of the worlds world. all the worlds are going to come to an end that's what's going to happen you'll get to see that later make sure you see it hit our twitter you'll get a notified of that immediately and we will see you next time hey wait what did you mean slow a mind <laughs>